Hi, welcome back to Let's Dish with Linda Lou. Today we're videoing from my sister's house, Tina. Hi everybody. And we're going to be doing guacamole. We are in a pandemic right now, so a lot of people are staying home, spending time with their family, and doing a lot of grilling out. So I thought guacamole would be the perfect side dish to have with whatever you're grilling. But I'm going to be doing it in three different ways. To start, I've got the avocado. I've diced it up. I'm going to add a couple more to it to show you how to pit and take the flesh out of the avocado. I get a lot of questions uh, from family and friends on how to buy an avocado. How do I know when it's right? So let's talk about that for a minute. I've got two avocados here. The dark green one is unripe. When you touch it, it's hard. The one that turned brown, not a deep brown, just turning from green to brown. And when you push it, has a slight give, that's when your avocado is ripe. I like to buy my avocados when they're green, put them in a brown bag, fold it up, put it in a dark place, and in 24 to 48 hours, they're ready to use. So let's start on how to open an avocado. I'm putting an apron on so I don't get my clothes all messed up. And we're gonna show you how to open an avocado. I turn it on its side, put the knife in, and just slowly turn it around and it comes right off. To take the pit out, get yourself a towel, put the avocado in the palm of your hand using the butt of your knife, remove the pit. I'm going to switch to a paring knife. It's a smaller knife. And we're just going to score, without going through the skin, lines in a crisscross pattern. More time. Lines going down. Lines going across. And this will remove chunks. Really easy. Get yourself a spoon. Let's get my avocado bowl here. Place your spoon in and just scoop out the avocado. Spoon it in and just follow the skin around and you'll have small dice chunks. So here I have some prepared avocado that I've used to just mash up. Some people like a very creamy guacamole. I like mine to have chunks. I like the texture. So what I've done here is just mashed the avocado until it's the consistency that I like, whatever your preference might be. Now, guacamoles vary. Everybody has their own take. My basic avocado guacamole has red, diced, finely diced red onion and uh, avocado, lime juice, salt, and pepper. That's the base for any guacamole I make. So from this point, let's go ahead and add the diced onion and fresh lime juice. So to the avocado, and I'd say I've got 10 to 12 avocados here because I'm gonna be making a guacamole three different ways. So we have a prepared avocado. I'm gonna add some diced onion. I'm going to say about a quarter, a heaping quarter cup. To that, salt. Avocado loves salt. So plenty of salt. Is this is the only chance you have to season it. And some freshly ground black pepper. Now, for the lime juice. I'm going to cut some limes. Get the juice rolling. I just roll the lime on the counter. In half, place it in the juicer and squeeze it. This is where all the muscles come in. Okay, we're gonna do this till we have a good, good quarter cup. This is my base for any guacamole that I choose to make. Now you'll have some people that will add tomato, 
jalapeno, hot sauce. We'll get you all that. <laughs> Behind me here, I have three bowls. What I'm going to do is evenly distribute the guacamole into each bowl to show you the three different varieties of guacamole you can serve at any grilling party or whenever you just want a good guacamole. So let's fill up these bowls. This is a Fresno chili. A lot of people like to use jalapeno. I'm a big fan of the Fresno. It's a slightly spicier, very uh, fruity, and it adds a lot of color. This skin is a little thicker than a jalapeno. What I do to take the heat out is remove the ribs and the seeds, and I've got it finely diced right here. All right, over here, I have two types of fresh salsa you can buy in the produce department of most grocery stores today. This is a mango, and this is just a pico de gallo. Earlier, I was telling you that a lot of people add diced tomato, hot sauce, jalapeno. Instead of chopping all that up, this is a quick shortcut. So we're gonna grab a spoon, and in the first bowl, and I have found the slotted spoon, which is what I was looking for, is we don't need all the juice. We just need the pico. So I'm going to add that right here, about a quarter cup. In this bowl, I'm going to add the mango salsa. Another quarter cup. I don't need all the juice, so we'll just let that drain out a little bit. Perfect. Okay, let me set that aside. Now, we're going to toss these together just to mix them in to combine. Okay. So I have a plain, a plain pico de gallo guacamole and I have a mango salsa guacamole. So those are these two. What I like to do at this point is add some raw, finely diced red onion just for extra texture. So we're just gonna add a little of the diced red onion and a pinch of the Fresno chili for heat. Just each one. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we have our prepared base guacamole here. Here I have some super lump crab meat. I took it out of the can and I went through, I made sure there was no shells, nobody wants to eat shells. So I went through it, everything looks good. What I'm going to add to this is some finely minced chives. Just for a little onion flavor, color, and to brighten the crab up. So we're going to use, I don't know, about two to three table, good tablespoons full. Just add that right into the crab. Yeah, these two here. Perfect. The Fresno chili already pre-diced and seeded. We're going to add, I don't know, one to two tablespoons. We're going to add some fresh lime juice again. Roll the lime out. Get the juice is going. Put in our little juicer. Squeeze. And if you got one good juicy lime, you can get maybe two to three tablespoons of juice out of that, which should be just plenty for the crab. Have a spoon. Again, we need to season. Kosher salt, about a tablespoon, teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, and we're gonna toss to combine. This is what we're gonna put on top of our guacamole. We're not gonna mix it in, let your guests or wherever you're serving it to do that themselves. So we're gonna do the final guacamole with fresh crab. So 
So, just to recap, we have a crab guacamole, a mango salsa guacamole, and a pico de gallo guacamole. What I like to do is just take a fresh couple of sprigs of cilantro. I love cilantro or hate it. If you're not a fan of cilantro, Italian flat leaf parsley works just fine. All right, another option to the uh, crab guacamole, I bought some wonton wrappers. I made them into little circles instead of the squares they come in. And what I've done is I've toasted them off in the oven using a little rack that looks something like this. I take some um, nonstick cooking spray, olive oil, sprayed the rack, sprayed both sides of the wonton wrapper and just folded them over. Um, anytime you have extra crab that you're not using, this is a great idea to serve as an appetizer. So these are my mini ta uh, crab tacos. We talked about the three guacamoles. To the mango one, I thought it'd be kind of fun to change things up a little bit. I've got here some fresh sliced strawberries. Remember, it's super hot outside. Everybody's outside. So I thought we'd buy some fresh strawberries and just top, not even going to mix it in, the top of the mango guacamole with some fresh strawberries. So we have your standard guacamole, a little kicked up with the pico, the crab guacamole, and now we have the mango guacamole finished with some fresh diced strawberries. For these recipes, you can go to Let's Dish with Linda Lou at lindalouhamill.com. All the measurements, all the details will be on there. Also want to mention that my sister Tina that I talked about earlier is doing a videography and you can go to her website at Photoco Photography. So uh, let's give it a taste. So this is my favorite part, and that's the part where we get to taste what we made. I'm going to start with the mango, with the top of the strawberries. Make sure I get a little of the strawberries, some of the cilantro, of course the guacamole. Here we go. The strawberries really do the trick here. You can taste the freshness and the brightness they add. Guacamole, not too spicy, creamy. Absolutely delicious. Now, for the pico de gallo, let's give that one a try. Really, really good. The diced tomatoes add a completely different texture to the guacamole, and you get that kick of the lime juice. Really, really super delicious. Finally, my favorite, the crab guacamole. Make sure we get some of the guacamole, some of the crab. Roller coaster in your mouth. This one is absolutely fabulous. The sweetness of the crab, the tartness of the lime juice, the creaminess of the avocado, just, just super, super delicious. I think if you make one of these, all three of these, anyone for your family and friends, they're going to want your recipe. So what I've made here is I took the extra wontons, and instead of cutting them into circles for the tacos that I explained earlier, I just cut them on a diagonal, laid them out on a sheet pan, sprayed both sides with some nonstick cooking spray, put them in the oven, 350, maybe, maybe five to seven minutes. Keep an eye on them, they burn really easy. Um, if you want to add some seasoning after you not add your nonstick spray, maybe a little chili powder, kosher salt, pepper, you want cayenne if you want it hot, you can add any spice mixture you want once you've sprayed them with the uh, nonstick cooking spray. Let them cool, throw them in a bowl. Here's what the taco shells look like after using this contraption right here and they harden and that's how I filled my mini tacos. So either way, however you like to serve them, your guests are just gonna love 
these three guacamoles. If you want more recipes, you can visit lindaluhamill.com. And thanks for spending some time with me. Um, because we're during, we're. Uh, That's okay. Take one. My hands, not this part. I've got a. Okay, there we go. Twist. See, the, I can't. So this is my base for any avocado, I mean guacamole. That's